It only takes a split second for everything to fall apart. Watch as these corrupt cops make decisions that instantly end their careers, leaving them with no way back. Just like in this first case, where officers mistook a wrench for something else. The vehicle, do you have insurance? You show it to me. On June 2nd, 2023, a young Jason McGee had been driving his mom's car, unaware that his day was about to spiral into a nightmare. He became the target of not one, but two unjust police stops. The first encounter involved Lieutenant Drew Edwards, who pulled Jason over, alleging that the car's tags indicated no insurance. Jason, ever the responsible citizen, promptly presented valid proof of insurance from Priority Insurance. However, Edwards wasn't convinced. Hey, I'll stop you because it's not showing that you have insurance on the vehicle. Do you have insurance? Can you show it to me? Who do you have uh, insurance to, Mr. McGee? Priority insurance? Okay, I'm showing one that shows an effective date, but it's not showing an ex expiration date. Rather than letting Jason continue on his way, Edwards meticulously examined the insurance document dragging out the process. What felt like ages later, Edwards finally allowed Jason to leave. However, in a surprising twist, he handed Jason a warning for something he hadn't even done, advising him against driving without a licensed adult. This warning came despite Jason already demonstrating that he was fully within his legal rights to be on the road. Hey, Miss McGee, can you hear me? Do you have uh, Do you have it on your phone by chance? Okay. All right. That's fine. Okay. Well, I see an effective date of March uh, of 08, so that typically means that you're going to, I mean, it's going to have insurance. Um, so my next issue is, is he's supposed to have a licensed adult with him until next month. Where do you live at? Okay, just make sure you get home, all right? And don't drive without another licensed adult, okay? All right, brother, I don't want you to get a ticket for no reason. Jason's day was far from improving. In fact, his troubles had only just begun. As he tried to move past the first encounter, another officer decided to target him. Still rattled from the earlier stop, Jason made a decision that would take the situation to another level. He drove a bit further and pulled into his family's church where his mother was waiting. We're turning onto Hills Road. We're slow rolling on Hills Road now, going back towards the access road. Pulling into Brushy Island Family Life Center. In Jason's position, after already being unjustly stopped, it made sense to seek safety in a familiar place, especially as a young black man facing a tense situation. Choosing to stop somewhere where others could vouch for him seemed logical. However, this reasonable decision only intensified the officer's response. They approached his car with guns drawn, shouting aggressive commands. Get your hands up! No. Open that door, step out with your hands up! Open the door! Come open the please. Reach out and open the door! No. Come open. Reach out and open the door. door! There you go! Step out, just keep your hands up, that's all you gotta do, okay? Please. Unbuckle, please. Unbuckle the seatbelt. Just hang on a second, stay back over there! Stay back over there! Come on, buckle, please. Now just reach in there and unbuckle it. Unbuckle your seatbelt. Seat step out. You sure? No, 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 no way. Nobody's gonna shoot anybody. Don't just stay calm. Ma'am, stay back. You sure? Right hand, look. Right. Take your right hand. Unbuckle the seatbelt. 
Step out. Do you unbuckle it? Step out. Step out of the car. Keep your hands up. Chaos broke out as a scared Jason did what the officers told him to do. He took off his seatbelt and got out of the car, raising his hands. Meanwhile, his mother, seeing the frightening scene, tried to step in and help. Is the, the vehicle is yours? Okay. Were you on the phone with him at the time, or? He, he pulled out in front of another officer, and when the officer went to stop him, we continued, like I said, up over the overpass, down this way to here. He wouldn't stop. That's the reason why the lights and sirens were going. This is when things took a turn for the worse. Realizing they may have gone too far, the officers attempted to defend their actions. They told Jason's mother they were uncertain about his intentions when he didn't stop right away. They argued that drawing their guns was necessary to ensure everyone's safety. Don't shoot my son. No, nobody's going to shoot anybody. Let's, th that's not our intentions, but like I said, we, do, we don't know what's going on. Yeah, we didn't, know what, we didn't know what was going on. Right. And the man told him they didn't have to be... Uh, shouldn't be in the car by himself. He just left that Casey. Yeah. And they told him to come straight home. Okay. So as he's coming home, something must have happened, and yeah, he he pulled, he, up, and I said, "Well, you need to come home. Just okay. Come home. I didn't know what was going on at that time. He just got pulled over. Right. So I, it's my. Their explanation did nothing to ease the tension. Instead, it underscored their total lack of understanding. They claimed that Jason's decision to drive to a safe location justified their extreme reaction. You found out our tenant from our point also, when we light him up and try to stop him, he just keeps going. Mm. And like I said, from back there at Keel and Brockington, all the way down Keel, up over the over. So for his safety and ours, that's why we got him out the way that we did. We put him in cuffs, sort everything out, and we'll go from there. But like, like I said, we, we didn't know what was going on. Like I said, when somebody doesn't want to stop, unfortunately, in our line of work, so, and, and I understand where you come from completely too with the, I know the time and, and all that right now and everything that's going on, but he did, he did the best thing he could do. He cooperated and did everything that we asked him to. So, but like I said, um, but the, did, did he say why he got stopped or um, it, and the, it, and the, it, the first the time or whatever? It ran the tags and it showed that it didn't have any insurance, but it does and he sold it. Okay. It just wasn't coming up. The lady that uh, the officer is, she's a lieutenant, so she's, it's her stop. So I'm going to let her conduct her, her business. But like I said, the reason why I don't know um, what had happened, I just happened to be on the access road when, when they hit the, the overpass. But apparently he pulled out in front of her and almost caused an accident. And that's the reason why she hit her lights and, or hit her sirens and lights to try to stop him to figure out what was going on. And then this is where we ended up at. Okay. Just when it seemed things couldn't get any worse, a courageous onlooker stepped in. This unknown bystander, refusing to ignore the blatant wrongs happening before him, decided to speak up. He boldly confronted the officers, openly criticizing their racial prejudice and excessive force. Have a good day. No, yeah. no, I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. You're blocking the road right now, so. No one's no one's here. This is public road. You're I realize that, but you stopped in the middle. You got a problem with that? Did I say anything to you? You're staring at me, coming closer. Is that an issue or uh -huh. Is that an issue? No problem with it. Okay. Did I say I had a problem? You don't work then. I'm standing where I need to stand, just like you are, sir. No. Yes, sir. I live in this town for eight years. I'm afraid of everything. I'm, I'm getting tired of the racism. Seventy-five percent less they can pull over a white folk than a black person. Not just you, the whole department. I'm afraid of the request. I'm a white, fifty-seven-year-old man. I got some years on you. And him and her. You get respect by earning respect. Well, that's what I'm trying to give you, sir, and okay. you keep yelling over and, at me. And, and I know I've had. I've had why, why are you attacking me? I've never met I you attack, before. You attack me by being on, on a. I asked you to get out of the roadway, sir. And, and being petted. And well, if I, I sir, it's 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 the, it's, it's the law, isn't that it's correct? It's the law. If it's a crime scene, put out tape. Well, no, it's a it's a I law can, about I blocking the. I can get on that side of tape. Yeah, I can. That's public. If the sergeant or you want to arrest me, go ahead. The officers, clearly unsettled by the confrontation, tried to dismiss the bystanders' claims. Despite this, the courageous citizens' intervention underscored the need for public accountability in fighting police misconduct. 
Instead of admitting their mistake, the officers doubled down, issuing a ticket to Jason's mother for allowing him to drive unsupervised. This move was a blatant attempt to shift blame and highlight ongoing issues within the police department, showing that protecting their reputation often outweighs seeking justice. To, to be with him on this stuff, but I've also got to be with you on a couple of things too. Okay, you knew he was driving, you continue to let him drive the car. Well, and what's going to happen is you're going to get a ticket, mm -hmm. all right? You're going to come to court. Okay. So let me go and figure out this. He's going to have at least citations. I don't know if he's going to go for anything else or not. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he says that he's supposed to be going to work, but he's also supposed to be at school. Okay. It was just registering that they didn't have insurance, and we showed the proof of insurance. And, we let, and he did say, he was like, you know, you're in close proximity. I don't want you to get a ticket for anything else. If you had it on home, because he was just right here at Casey's. Okay. And um, he said, just go on home, you know, because he did say that. And I was like, well, you were on your way home, just come on home. And then soon, I'm on the phone with him, and that's when I heard you guys' lights on him. And he started getting into a, 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 a frantic. Okay. And so I don't, okay. he's by himself. I get it. So listen, can I ask you to do something next time? If you're, if you're that concerned about it? Three-way call 911 if you feel like it's going to be a bad situation. Okay, let them know what your concerns are, but let's get them stopped so that we don't have to do all this. Because mm -hmm. I get it, I hear your concerns, mm -hmm. right? And listen, I know that mine are actually going to change how you feel, mm -hmm. right? I, I hope it doesn't add on to that, yeah. but nobody could have done this thing, right? He did what we asked. Just when we thought the situation couldn't get any more intense. This next case is even more disturbing. On a summer evening, July 26, 2021, Officer Duke Lance from the Orangeburg Department of Public Safety responded to a call about a man allegedly wielding a gun and banging on a townhouse door. Upon reaching the scene, tension in the air, he swiftly drew his weapon, directing 58-year-old Gail Yard and his cousin, Mario Julian, who stood in the parking lot to the ground. Hey, let me see your hands. Bert, get on the ground. Get on the ground. Get on the ground right here. Get on the ground. You, Bert, you shirt, get on the ground. Over here. On the ground. On the ground. In trying to follow Officer Duke's order, Mr. Gale Yard got down on his hands and knees. But then Officer Duke did something surprising, raising serious questions about how far the authority should really go. Get on the ground. Do, do you not listen? Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Get on the ground! There's a gun behind me. There's a gun, I believe, behind me. I ain't got no gun Mr. Galeyard tried to comply with Officer Duke's orders by getting onto his hands and knees. However, Officer Duke forcefully pressed his foot down, pushing Mr. Galeyard's head violently against the pavement. Although Officer Duke initially claimed to believe that Mr. Galeyard had a gun, it was clear by the time he used force that Mr. Galeyard posed no immediate threat, as both of his empty hands were raised above his head before he kneeled down. Put your hands behind your back. Is there a gun back there? By that truck. You're not listening, dude. You got a gun on you, man? No, I ain't got no gun. I, I don't have no gun. No. Oh. Right, Michael. Paul, do you watch him say? He had something. I ain't got no gun. The door's unlocked. No, he was right here. Watch him. Go watch him. There it is. Alright, that's what he had. Alright, who's the complainant? Alright, get up. Get, get him up. 25 seconds, got one tank. Put your leg that way so you can stand up. Alright, listen, I'm about to help you. Hold on, hold on. Alright, ready? 
One, two, three. Sorry. Even after recognizing that Mr. Gale Yard had no weapon and posed no threat, Officer Duke neither apologized nor removed the handcuffs. Instead, he responded with rudeness. Yep. Listen. Yep. I hate Listen. Now on the cement. Yep. Go back inside. Go back in the house. Go back in the house. Ain't nobody talking to you. I got head drummer. Go back in the house. Yep. Yep. I head down. Yep. I've been in accident. Yep. Yo, put my head down. You threw me down. I so sure did. You wasn't listening. Yep. No, it ain't. You ain't just threw me down like that. I'm disability. Okay. I got head problems. Yup. You threw me down. Yup. You threw me down. You threw me down. Yup. You threw my head down on the cement. Officer Dukes was soon joined by his supervisor, and the story he made up became even more troubling. Yup. You crossed my head. Alright, let me tell you what happened. His forehead. My head down on the seat. He was, he was in front of the car when I came up. And he was walking like this, and I, I thought it was a gun at first. I said, "Drop the gun, drop the gun, drop the gun, drop the gun." Had him at gunpoint. Over here doing something like this. You slammed my head. What he was doing is putting this up behind the tire. So he comes over right here. He got his hands in his pockets. I'm telling him, "Let me see your hands. Let me see your hands. Let me see your hands." He wasn't listening. He got the, like this right here, and we went on to the ground. That's what happened. Your head digging hit the cement. Damn right. Could you down on the cement? Where's the complainant? Your head down on the cement. Right here? No. Where's the complainant? I'm trying to get the name of the complainant. My head. Officer Dukes claimed that Gale Yard had a weapon, even without any proof. His supervisor, sensing something was off, decided to look into it further. She wasn't comfortable with how things were unfolding. Ain't nobody, there ain't nothing here. nobody here on the first charge. Who called? I'm not sure. Um, Take him out of cuffs right now. I mean, because that's what we got. Yeah. No doubt. Yeah. Dude, I didn't know what his attention was. You need to look for camera. Mm -hmm. All right. The officer did wrong. Slam my head down. Bust my forehead. Damn right. You going to pay me for that? Mayor, I'm going to take that in the evidence of what he had. What? Well, I mean, it's, you know, that's, that's the reasons I did what I did. You know what I'm saying? That's where I'm coming from. Because when he was behind the truck, I couldn't see what he was doing. And I didn't know where, where that went. If it was still in his pockets when he come around that car with his hands Officer Dukes kept changing his story when talking to his supervisor. First, he said he saw a gun, but then admitted he never actually did. Then, he changed his story again. Scared of the consequences of his corrupt actions, it was clear he realized he had messed up and was now desperately trying to cover his tracks. As the situation unfolded, a civilian asked Officer Dukes for his ID card and badge number. 
basic information any officer should provide. But instead of complying, Dukes lied, claiming he hadn't been assigned one. This was a clear attempt to dodge accountability. His supervisor, however, overheard the conversation and immediately stepped in. Can I get a car for you? I don't have one, man. We don't have one. They, they, they don't give us cars. Okay, what's your badge number? 1059. Let me see if I can get my phone. Hold on. Hold on. We, we, we have cars. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Brandon, you can get this stuff off the car. It was clear that the other officers were not okay with what Officer David Lance Dukes did to Gail Yard. They knew he had messed up, especially when he made up a story to cover it all up. This led to Dukes getting fired and even facing criminal charges for what he did. The other officer's reaction showed just how wrong his actions were and how serious the situation had become. As we've seen, the abuse of power can come in many forms, from unjust violence to misleading narratives. The problems don't end with Officer Duke Lance. Next, we'll look at how this officer's personal issues led to a scandal that shook both his life and his career. On November 12, 2017, Albuquerque police officers were called to a park after reports of a man being assaulted while with his girlfriend. Upon arrival, the situation quickly took a dramatic turn. My hand is really sore and it's getting swollen in multiple places. David 635, go ahead and send me 4355. Have them come west of the dog park. <coughs> so, what happened? Uh, someone ran down the hill. I was sitting here exercising. 30 year old male, uh, multiple blows to the head, uh, swelling on the side of the face. He is conscious of breathing. Just came down and jumped to me and started hitting me in the head. Do you know him? Yeah. Okay. And from what I understand, this is his wife? Yeah? Okay. So, you had any beef with him? Any issues? Uh, there's been an ongoing issue, but nothing physical until now. Okay. You want to press charges? No. No? It soon came to light that the victim was involved in an affair with the wife of the man who attacked him. As they dug deeper, the officers made a startling discovery. The victim was none other than off-duty Albuquerque police officer Josh Malachy. Go up to the vehicle so EMS can come check you out, and then we'll finish the rest of this. Do you have your driver's license on it's you? In, my or is car. in your my car. Phone is okay. In there. What I'll do is, uh, once I'm done talking with you, you know what month we're in? November. What year is it? 2017. <clears throat> Who's president? President <laughs> Trump. How many quarters in a dollar? You have any medical issues? Allergic to anything? Yeah. He's not here and he doesn't want to press charges anyway. It's an ongoing issue. It's just never been violent. Now it's violent. All right. And I think it may be because the, the chick that's over here is the wife. Of the other dude? Of the suspect. Oh. Uh, so it might be a, you're sleeping with my wife, but he was over here working out and the guy just came down to go beat the crap out of him. Okay. <clears throat> okay, Sean, because you don't want to press charges, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write an informational report on this. While Officer Maliki had certainly crossed the line, it was hard not to feel some sympathy for the husband who learned his wife had been unfaithful. I've never been in one fight in my entire life. Okay. Never been hit. So <laughs> if you feel like this is an ongoing thing and it's just escalated to this, Nine times out of ten, I can't even say that. Sometimes it'll escalate even worse. Like he may put you in the hospital. Or worse. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a chat with her and, and find out the situation, what's going on, so. 
Okay, ma'am. What's your name? Stephanie. And who who showed up? My husband. What's your husband's name? Josh Malik. Huh? Josh Malik. Josh is in APD, Josh. The officer let out a sigh upon hearing the name, Josh Malachy, a fellow officer who had already been arrested for a DW1 just a few months prior in August. It was clear that Josh's life was unraveling, and to make matters worse, his wife seemed indifferent to the chaos she had helped create. So I'll ask you again, Sean, do you want to press charges? I mean, it's totally up to you. If you don't feel safe, if you feel like this is going to progress on some, it's going to get written up anyway. And what does that mean? Um, there's going to be a report made, and it's going to go. I take it you know who her husband is. Yeah. So it's going to go up through the yeah. department. It's too, right? Yeah. It's going to go up through the department, and it's going to go to internal affairs because he still is an employee. But if you don't feel safe. Even after this, if something else happens, call us back. Um, I'm going to give you a case and a cat number, and you can reference it off, off of that. But the decision is totally yours. Because that's what you told me, because you called me frantic on the phone saying he just left drunk in the car. He's looking for me on my phone. I was thinking that this would be the same way to me. Despite the emotional turmoil, nothing could justify the violence that Officer Josh had resorted to. Fortunately, the victim chose not to press charges against him. So, in the report, I'm also going to put that your key was lost. Either here or he may have taken it. Pretty We're not sure. Good. So, it should have been right there. Yeah, so mm -hmm. if if something happens with the vehicle, reference that and they'll, they'll know that the key was missing. So, either somebody picked it up, picked it up from here, and figured out where your car is, or it was him, so it'll be in the report. All right, thank you. Any questions for me, Sean? No, that's okay. Okay, I'm gonna hang out for a little bit until... Okay, yeah, they know. should be here in 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Okay, okay. cool. Stephanie, you gonna be good? Yeah. You gonna be okay going home? Uh, I'll probably stay away for a little while. <laughs> okay. Go over there with my mom. Let us know if there's anything else we can do, anything else we can help with. If you have any issues, go ahead and call us back, okay? All right. I'm going to hang out for a little bit longer and then until somebody comes and opens his vehicle. And then all I'll do is I'll keep swinging by and just kind of keep an eye on your vehicle. Okay, yeah, thanks, yeah. The officers eventually left the scene. As for Officer Josh Malachy, already on administrative leave, he later pled guilty to his DW1 charge. If that terrible case of racial profiling wasn't your cup of tea, watch as this cop goes up against a lawyer. Go sit in father. your car. What I will talk I to him in a father? minute. Get in your car now. Tell, tell, take it. No, you do not touch me. On February 9th, 2023, in South Kingstown, Rhode Island, attorney Claire Hall was driving along Route 1 when she came upon a collision involving a high school student and another vehicle. Moved by a sense of duty, she decided to intervene, but little did she know how she would soon be labeled as a criminal. Yeah, the key's stuck. Okay. It's broken. Are you gonna, well, so you think he's gonna be taken with the scene or, or will he just... Uh, uh, are you... I'm gonna, not, no, no, I'm on the phone with this time. Dad, it's my oh. dad. But how many, how many cars are involved right now? Not mine, that's mine. Alright, let's, let's, we need to get that off the road. All right, can we get that into the parking lot? He's, yeah. All right, can we get that into the parking lot? He's, yeah. We'll, we'll take we care of him, man. Nice. Okay. I'm, I'm just trying to tell his father. So, he, okay, that's well, we're him. in the middle of the highway, right? Oh, yes. so, All right, can you, can you move your car, please? Sure. Thank you. My man, is your car drivable? The only thing Miss Hall wanted to do was help. But the first responders on the scene, officers Matthew White and Anthony Souza, were pretty dumb. Seems like everyone's got a badge these days. My man, is your car drivable? 
Yeah. All right, we're going to get it off to the side I, of the road, all right? All I'm saying is I can leave. I just want to tell us five. You don't have to leave. Just no, move I your car. Leave. I just want you to tell me. Are Where? you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Let's have a seat right over Where? here. Is that your mom? No. No? I'm working. Can you please go sit in your car? You have nothing to do his with this. Father, I he's understand. A minor. I'm an attorney because he's a minor. I'm. You need to tell me. Is he going to be here? I don't need to tell you anything. You, I'm, you, I'm going to arrest you in a second if you don't get in your car. Do oh, you understand me? I'm not kidding you. You are kidding. You are impeding an investigation right now, and you're really bothering me. Which go I tell sit in your father. car. What I will talk I to him in father? a minute. Get in your car now. Tell, tell, take it. No, you do not touch me. Oh my God! What are you doing? Knock it off! Knock it off! Get your hands off me right now! Get your hands off! Tell him to get his hands off me! Yes, I do. Tell him to get his hands off me! Oh my god! Stop! Stop! No, I'm not stopping! Are you fucking kidding me, right? Recording. Recording. I'm wearing a body camera. These officers were nothing less than entitled and arrogant. And Miss Hall, unfortunately, had the luck of meeting them that day. Their badges clearly grant them authority over decency. I understand, but why am I under arrest? Because you weren't listening to anything we were saying. How about you stop resisting I know. I and you let us put you in handcuffs? Well, rescue crew Oh my God! Sit up. Can you please call Bob Barber? Sit up. Call Bob Barber right Barber? now. Who's that? He's in Narragansett Police. Please call him. Well, we're not in Narragansett. I understand that. I cannot believe you. Take this fucking off me right okay, now. Okay, 50. I have one in custody. Oh my God. And resisting. Yeah. Oh my Let's God. Go put her in my car. I just wanted to know. I could tell his father if he's going to the hospital. I'm not even involved in this. I can't believe this. That was our point the I whole time. I cannot believe this. That was our point the you whole time. You are not involved. Oh you are God. not involved. I'm a good Samaritan. We instructed you to do something. I'm a good and Samaritan. And you refused to do it. I'm a good Samaritan who stopped to help a kid. And this Let's is go. what happened. Okay, stop growing. I'll get up on my own. You're crazy. Now. Oh my God, stop it. It's clear as daylight that the officers are clueless about the law. Instead of showing concern for the 17-year-old's medical condition, they directed their attention to Miss Hall. Their demeanor noticeably shifted towards greater aggression and hostility. How can they protect anyone when they disregard a child's health? No! This man is beating the shit out of me! Holy shit! Yes, he is! Oh my god. Oh my god. This is the crazy... I've never... Oh, I, stop pushing me, please. I won't walk. Are you kidding me? You are. You guys don't know how to struggle here. I am going to see you for salt. I know. What's that? You're in so much trouble. I can't even. I can't even tell you. Oh my God, this is the craziest thing I've ever in my time. I'm not going to relax. I am so. I can't. Find her key, but the car started up, so it's in there somewhere. Her key is probably in the car. As Ms. Hall fought to maintain her composure, the officers geared up to remove her forcibly from the scene. Their lack of decorum is glaringly evident in these casual exchanges among themselves, right in the midst of an accident, I might add. Yeah, I heard you guys. I heard you guys say one in custody. I'm like, oh, here we go. It was so, it was so unnecessary. Right. Yeah. But like my tolerance for that is like, I'm just like, 
listen. It's you, you're not going to listen to what I'm saying. We're in the middle of a highway. Yeah. Get in your car and get off the highway. I, I, well, I was going to fucking still her up, too. She started screaming like a oh, The kid was even more freaked out than anything. How old was the kid that was? I don't know. 05 is his birthday. 17? Wow, that's Mike's. The cops went all out with their aggressive tactics. First, Miss Hall found herself dramatically thrown to the ground with a knee ceremoniously placed on her body. Then she was pushed into a police cruiser ride for a whopping 20 minutes, all before being graced with charges of wrongful misdemeanors at the station. In response, Miss Hall decided to spice up her social calendar by filing a lawsuit against these brutes. The 23-page lawsuit alleged that she was unlawfully arrested and physically injured and no doubt emotionally damaged, embarrassed, and unlawfully charged as a criminal. Well, if you think this cop was rude to Stephanie, watch how this next paid the price for unjustly dealing with citizens. You're not here on official, you're not here on official business. What do you mean? I'm not addressing you on official capacity. Don't you work for the you. public? I do. So why won't you give your name and act professional? I gave you my name. On February 28th, 2024, First Amendment Auditor Joey decided to check out the Lee County gun range, operated by the Sheriff's Office. It was supposed to be a straightforward visit, but of course things went south faster than you can say freedom of speech. What's going on in America? We're out at Lee County gun range. <clears throat> Lee County Sheriff's Office. Use other door. Call for assistance. Call for assistance. How you doing today? Good. I just taking some video around this building. That's it. Cool. All right. Thank you. No blue nine on that. Yeah, boy. No blue nine on that. They turned, they turned off the lights. Range in use. So, brother, how you doing? How you doing, man? Good. Range in use. You guys are done practicing? Um, I'm not really sure what well, I mean, I don't know. The, li the lights were on there. I, the lights were on there. Now it's not. I can go walk through there? Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 not for the moment. I just take. Yeah, I know, but I was just saying, I saw through the window and now it's like the lights are off. I'm just saying. I got I got a glimpse out of it. Oh, they pay to be in there. Oh, I gotcha. I've never been here. Okay, now I see how it works. Cool. Appreciate it, man. What's your name? My name is Mike. Nice to meet you, Mike. All right. Joey was off to a great start, meeting really nice people. But there's always someone ready to swoop in and ruin the day. At first, they seem pleasant enough, but what they do next will leave you shocked. Damn, I wanted to see a little more of this. It's off now. Why'd you guys shut the blinds? What's up, brother? Why'd you guys shut the blinds? Oh yeah. yeah it's public. Yeah. I didn't know. That. I just took a glimpse and then now it's the the blinds are shut. That sucks. <laughs> What's your name and badge number? I'm sorry. What's your name and badge number? Captain Griffin. Cool, Captain. Captain Griffin. Yeah. You got a badge number? Yeah. You do? Zero, one number zero two nine. Okay, cool. Yeah. Nice to meet How you, man. You, man. I'm good. Hanging in there. Just Who are you, by the way? What's your name, brother? My name? Yeah. My name is Joey. Nice to meet you, bro. Nice Come up and shoot. Yeah. For real? Mm -hmm. So, like, I could become a member? Well, it depends. Uh, they got to run you and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. They do all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. All right. No, I just find it kind of interesting. I don't know. i never been here, and that's all I'm doing. I'm just taking no, a look. No, we got a problem, man. You cool. This, you awesome. Take pictures. The only thing we ask is, like, you know, when you guys are going around cars, especially like that, you know, 
Come, come watch that. You know. Yeah, but Keep I up. like recording the cars. I like recording to make sure the cars are clean. I like recording inside the vehicles, but that's not illegal to do that. Yeah, we, we, we don't. Again, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, There's so nothing wrong with that unless you guys are hiding something in there or something. Just <laughs> around, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? That's all I'm doing. I'm not trying to break into vehicles and etc. <laughs> Captain Griffith was cooperative, providing Joey with details on membership rules and sharing insightful information. But as Joey recorded cars, the atmosphere shifted. Everyone was fine with it, except for Sergeant Mike King. He decided to intervene, making it his mission to create some unnecessary drama. Something like that, yeah, pretty much. All right, well, I appreciate it. Yeah, what's, you got a badge number? Yes, I do. What is it? Uh, you're, not here official, you're not here on official business. What do you mean? I'm not addressing you on official capacity. Don't, don't you work for the you. public? I do. So why won't you give your name and act professional? I gave you my name. So go back and look at Yeah, I know, but your badge number. If there's anything else I can help you with. Yeah, your badge number? How do I know it's you? Come on, man. You other, all your other buddies were cool. Are you ashamed of your badge number? Why'd you come out here though? To address me? That's crazy. I'm gonna have to find out your badge number. Can I just get your badge number? I'll be on my way. I said no. Why won't you give your because badge Because we're not here on official capacity. If you you don't have to be. This range, we can sign you up right nah. up here and you can pay your membership. What's the attitude? Relax. My no. business is recording here. Feel uncomfortable in any kind of way. Oh, feelings, feelings, you're gonna go uh, with feelings instead of the law? <clears throat> you shouldn't even have that badge if you're gonna act that way. Have a nice day. Have a bad day. See, when, when, when they act out like that, man, that's crazy. That's why they get what they give. I'm sorry, ma'am. Can I just ask you a question real quick? Joey, rightfully asserting his rights, asked the lady for the supervisor to report Sergeant Mike's behavior. Instead of the supervisor, who should appear again but Sergeant Mike himself? It seemed he was determined to make trouble for Joey. Can I get, can I get a supervisor, please? His supervisor. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. Can you give me your supervisor, sir? Of course not. The guy has a bad attitude, dude. Now, honestly, was I rude in any way, guys? Hi. Hey, how you doing? I just uh, need that man's badge number. I don't know what his badge number is. Why do you need his badge number? Because I want to file a complaint. Because he's unprofessional, he gave me a bad attitude, and he doesn't want to identify. I came here to record, not trying to interact with nobody. I wanted to know who he was. He's a public servant. He gave me a bad attitude. So I want to file a complaint. Have you guys got complaint forms? Nope, I don't have them. So how do I file a complaint on this guy? You go online. So how do I know who he is? Give his name. Sergeant Mike King. Sergeant yeah. Mike King, mm -hmm. he don't have a badge number. I don't know. What's can you just? This might gonna make things so you difficult. Were, you came to me. I didn't talk to you. Listen, what I'm you you? you okay, but hold on. The incident really didn't do Sergeant Mike any favors. He tried to dodge accountability by hiding his badge number and acted unprofessionally towards Joey. It was clear he wasn't showing the transparency and professionalism you'd expect from law enforcement. When the supervisor stepped in, it was a bit of a reality check for everyone involved, stressing the ongoing challenges people face in holding authorities accountable. It doesn't matter. It does. You work for the people, you work for me. You can't be acting like that. Did I give you an attitude? No, I didn't give you an attitude in here. I had a very good conversation with your other big buddy that was up here too. 
I asked you for your son. I want to know who I engaged with. I told you my name. Yeah, but what's your badge number? There can be a lot of last names that you gave me here. I don't know that. I want to know who I engaged with. And it's your policy to it. I'm sure that he's the only Mike King. Mike King. So you guys are not going to, you're not going to give me your badge number. Make it so simple. You're making this thing so hard. Isn't it your policy to identify when any any of us asks for your name, for your badge number, your name? Come on, I didn't come here for this. Joey made sure to recount all his interactions on the premises, detailing how Sergeant Mike had treated him during their second encounter, and not to mention he had it all on tape. No way was he going to get away with it. We were cool with it. I was cool with you. So I'm a, I'm a, I'm a supervisor. I'm a yeah, that's fine, but he shouldn't be acting like that. I got it on camera, dude. I was about to leave and he started talking to me from a distance and I walked up to him, telling him, no, I got everything. He goes, you got everything you need? I'm like, yeah, I got it. Cool. What's your name and your badge number? He goes, I'm not giving you that. He had a nasty attitude. Dude. All right. So, I mean, he shouldn't be treating the public like that and they can't do that, you know? Talk See, we, we're cool. I had another conversation, cool. But the big dude that was here a little while ago, mm -hmm. that shit I was Steve recording. Like yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Really cool guy, you know. And this is what we want to see, but people on my platform want to see professionalism, man. Accountability, transparency. This is why I record the cops. This is why I record government property, government officials. While Joey continued recording before leaving the building, it's more likely that Sergeant Mike will stay as he is because these officers love to hide their crimes but blame others. You sure you don't know his badge number? It just makes it easier for me. What's your name and badge number? Mike Swift. What's your name? Is that so hard? No, I don't understand why your co workers like that. But all right, you have a good day, man. I'm good. Can I help you with anything else? No, that's it. Really, it's kind of a boring time right now. Yeah. Not much going on. No, I know, but I just want to record the building and the vehicles outside, and that's it. Record through that window, which I saw what I saw. And basically, that's it, man. Uh, the only you know? Like, I don't, over on the old course, uh, we have to have a fill out a waiver for that. With waiver for what? Instruction as far as going through each obstacle, and that's just for your safety and somebody else's. So that way, if you're out there and you don't get hurt. Oh, no, I was just in the parking lot. I know. I'm, I'm just that's letting awesome. you know, like, please don't go into those courses and things like that. No, I don't need to go into that, bro. Anywhere that there's public access, mm -hmm. the public's allowed to be, mm -hmm. that's where I stay at. I know my limits, bro. That's it. Cool. You guys practice here too? Yeah. Yeah. All right. I've never been here. My viewers are like, yo, come to the gun range. I never recorded here. And I never been here. Yeah, no, but well, I caught something here. I mean, I wasn't looking for that, but now I got to make a video off this. But you're going to look professional. That's who we're looking for. Sorry that you got something. I think you know his badge number, though. That's what I think. I can assure you. But you're his supervisor. You're a lieutenant? Oh, you are? All right, man. You have a good day, man. I'm out of here. That's it. Good? I'm fine. I was just watching you record somebody and get something out of the vending machine. Yeah, no, it's not it's not that's not the point. It's just them. They're they're law enforcement. Yeah. I like to record them. Does they look good? Mm. The lawyer really showed those ignorant pigs who's on the right side of the law. Just like the gentleman in this next case. In 2022, police conducted a routine traffic stop. When Deputy Devin Blair saw that a car's registration had expired during a tag check, she pulled it over while on patrol and conducted a random vehicle registration check. What's your What's your last name? Sakim. Sakim. Okay. All right. I'm gonna have you go and step out the vehicle for me. She's gonna come and get me. Yeah. So you're about 57 minutes away from me. I was almost at the hospital. Okay. Just take this off the way. Um, just, uh, yeah, just tell me what the information you put in your, in your GPS, because that way I, I didn't go, the same thing. I don't know the name of this place right we'll, here. We'll, we'll, we'll get it figured out. We'll text it to you. It's Prince Avenue. It's Prince Avenue. All right, so here, here's what's going to happen, Sakeem, okay? Mm -hmm. Um, unfortunately, I'm going to have to place you in the custody today, okay? You're going to have to go down to jail. Oh, no. you got to get booked in. I'm going to take your fingerprints and picture, and you'll get a bond. But because you're driving on a suspended license, you gotta go down the jail. So I did not know. I have children, I have a sick uncle, and I run the household. I got you. Unfortunately, no, I really we, don't. We don't have a choice at this put, time. Please so put place me Go ahead and turn around and put your hands behind your back, please. Please put Auntie on the phone. Put your hands behind your back. Who set your phone up on the car? They put me under arrest right now. They, I don't know. For driving with suspended license? Driving with suspended license. 
I didn't know. And, 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 it's, and it's not even showing. Unfortunately, the law is different here in Georgia than it is in South Carolina. If you have a suspended license, you have to go down to the jail and get booked in. Oh, but, but sir, can you speak to my aunt? She has. Yeah, we're, we're on speakerphone. She okay, please, right now. No, please speak to her. Yeah. Please, please speak to her. I'm the only one that can help with my uncle that's sick in ICU right now. The police took the driver into custody, later identified as Muhammad Bilal El Amin, for operating a vehicle with a suspended license. At first, the cops were unaware of his background as the guy gave a fake name for himself. Please. I'm sorry about that. Unfortunately, we're stuck. Please, sir. You're driving a car without valid insurance. My son. Yeah, we got, you got that yes, taken care of. Got you're already son. driving a car without valid insurance. I won't drive. My cousin. You can't trust my, you to drive to drive. No, it. I swear to you, I'll walk away from my car. So we're going to walk you back to this please, other car. Please, sir. So sir. We're going to walk you to my car's oh, car. Come on. Sir, come please, on. my aunt is old. She's 80 years old. Sir, please. You have anything I, on I will not. I swear, you can, you can, please check me. Okay. Please check I'll everything on me. I'm going to search you and to arrest. Huh? See which is emergency 911? Yeah. Face towards that. Okay. Sir. Separate your feet out. Okay, Nothing in your pocket, sir. Sir, please. What please. all do you need out of your car? A, sir, I have a child at the house that they cannot take care of. I what have, all do you need out of your car? Sir, I beg you. I what? beg of you all. What? I will not touch my car. You what? can take my keys out. What all do you need out of your car? Uh, I don't need, I need my family. That's it. I do for my... I do a seat for me. Sir, I just place to turn and face towards me and then sit down in the seat. Slide in the legs in. Sir, I do for my entire family. Okay. Well, do I you know I'm seat. I don't have a choice here, man. I'm telling you. That's I, I told you job. I was not going to get in my car. We I don't swear have a to you, choice. I wasn't going to get in you my car. You have a suspended car. license. You're driving a car without insurance. You've got that taken care of. I've been of. doing it every you day. you got suspended registration. <laughs> you have to go down to the jail and get booked in. Just take your photograph. They're going to take your fingerprints. They'll give you a bond amount. And you can bond out, and then you can get on the way up to the hospital. But you can't drive. The driver begged the deputies to give him tickets for the offenses and let him go. But they explained that the law required them to arrest him. Sir, I, I so have a seat okay. for me, please. Okay, may I speak after you? Have a seat for me, please. Are you going to sit down and then I'll listen to you. Okay, so what do you, what do you want to tell me? On, on everything, my aunt just had a stroke. My uncle just had a stroke two and a half weeks ago. Yeah. I'm here helping my family. No, I don't even know who can come and bomb me out. I don't even know who can come and bomb me out. I'm not a criminal. I'm not a crook. I'm, if you, I look I mean, how old you, I am. Did you get a ticket or something? I didn't get take care of? I, I don't, mean, why would they suspend your license in South Carolina? That's, I just found out speaking to the deputy. Yeah. I just found out that maybe when we had a car that I had to got repossessed, that yeah. I didn't take my name off of it. Okay. Um, I, mean, I wouldn't imagine that they'd suspend you for a repossession. But that's what I'm saying. I did. I don't. But but it's no no information is coming up. I won't drive. I will. I'll have my cousin. Can you slide your lights in for us? You're not going to speak to me. No, unfortunately, I told you. I've already explained my position. To oh, you. this hurts. I don't have a choice. Sir, sir, I. Have, uh, sir. Okay, so the way you're sitting right now is not a good position. You're a tall guy. You got long legs. Can you? Slide your knees over this way and sit at an angle. After being stopped by the police, the driver showed them his license under the name Rice Sekhat, which the driver claimed was his name. When the officer arrested him, took him to the Oconee County Jail, and performed a fingerprint scan, they realized that the man was not who he claimed to be. I shot, I do everything, I do everything in the house. Do you need anything outside of your car? Um, just, just know that I, can you speak to my aunt? She, just, we have a speech. Uh-uh. Just. Just speak to my aunt because I do everything for the house. I okay. I, I, I do everything. My son is there. He's only 13 years old. He doesn't not he does not know what's going on. This is this is. I don't. Can you let my cousin know wherever it is I'm going? Did you let them know where they're going? Yeah. So when you get there, you'll be able to call them. How how can I call them? When you when they book you in, they'll give you some phone calls, so you can call them. Yeah, All right. 
Harry Potter. Yes, because I, I don't. Yeah. Why? I thought she was gonna let me just let my cousin pick me up. Why did this happen? I'm I'm so sorry. People, deputy, so many people rely upon me. You do not know. You can look. You can get in and get out. All right. I can get in and get out. Yeah, like they'll book you in if you have somebody that can bond you out. You have a preset bond, so you can bond out of jail. You don't have to wait to see a judge. Well, how much is that? Uh. I'm not quite sure. They'll give it to you when we get there, okay? We'll work with you, all right? We'll try to get you out as quick as possible. Man, this is, my uncle is sick. All right, well, the quicker we get to jail, the quicker you can get out, okay? Doors are all locked, all the windows are up. All right, cool. What is it? I've never been to jail in my entire Okay, all right. It'll be fine, I promise. All right, all right, we gotta get you to the jail. Mohammed Bilal El Amin was the real identity of the suspect, who had been on the run for almost 28 years. The FBI and Atlanta police were looking for him for a murder he allegedly committed in 1994. El Amin had been running from arrest ever since he was accused of killing 18-year-old Jafford Tucker. Moving on, here's an instance where cops were sent for a welfare check and were shocked by what they discovered inside. It's just barricaded up. With what? Uh, garbage and stuff. So how do you get in the half bag to walk in the bus? Now I feel like you're f***ing with me. What the hell is the deal? Tired. And you, um, when you went in there and checked on her two days ago, did you know that she was deceased? On May 5th, 2023, a couple of deputies arrived at the house of an old lady to conduct a welfare check on her after her sister grew concerned when she couldn't get in touch with her. As the cops arrived at the location, they didn't get any positive news. Did it smell when you went to the door? Yeah, there's a door out there on the opposite side. Did you see somebody? Have you seen Lainey recently? The girl? Yeah. Next door neighbor? Just the guys over there. When's the last time you seen them? Him, he usually walks up and down the road, but her, I haven't seen her in a while. How long would a while be? Mm. Days, months? Day or two. Couple three. days. Three? Three? Yeah. Three three yeah. Years or something like that. When's the last time you seen the boys? Yesterday. Okay, so nobody today? Mm-mm. Have you heard any, any fighting, anything in the last two days? Any it's loud commotion? Mm -hmm. I know it would be not abnormal for you to hear yelling and screaming coming from over there. So. Nothing. Any or any yeah, her boys. sister's looking for her and she's not able to get a hold of her, so that's why we're out trying to make contact with her. The deputies grew increasingly concerned as they searched for the missing old woman until they encountered another neighbor. Been there for like a few weeks because the tent wasn't there, and the tent showed up and then he was around. So. Right. Any. Any commotions or anything in the last couple of days no, or before like then? No, yelling or fighting or anything like that. They're Nothing here. They're pretty quiet for the most part. But okay. The most I see out of the dude is just like sometimes he walks up and down the road. Today he was riding a bike. So. Um. Do you know what color bike it was? I didn't pay attention. Okay. Was it just a bike or a yeah, tricycle? Like a, just like a full size like bike and bike. Okay. Alrighty. But I can smell that smell. You got close to the... Yeah. The AC is working. What do you see, Jose? No. Nothing. The kitchen's over there. So, yeah, but I can't. The officers learned that the woman lived with her son, but no one answered the door. After checking the hospitals with no updates, they returned to the house and knocked again. Surprisingly, this time, they were welcomed by the lady's son. Oh, I'm just, did you hear us knocking before yeah. where you knocked out? Well, I was sleeping in there. I'm glad you woke up because you're about to come inside. We're looking for mom. You, have you seen her? Right now. Do you know where she's at? Sister's asking for her. She's not in any trouble or anything like that. When was the last time you saw her? 
few days ago. Where'd she go? She's going to the store. She's in that car. Does she have a favorite place where she likes to go when she's not home? Does she tell you anything out of the normal when she last time you saw her? No. What happened the last time you guys were together? She gave me a few cigarettes and a little bit of food. And, uh, some hand soap washed my hands and told me I could come uh, stay back here. The guy appeared intoxicated, and his demeanor indicated something was terribly wrong. As the cops pressed further, they realized there was much more to this case than they initially suspected. When's the last time you text, called her, or anything like that? Okay. When was the last time you saw Dad? Go. Do you know where he's staying at? No. I heard that she might have called the cops on him. Yeah, he, he got arrested the 25th of last month. Mm -hmm. I never be all right if they just went inside to make sure she's not in there. It's not my house. Huh? I can't tell you no. Okay. But you stay here and it's your mom's house? And we're looking for mom, so we just want to make sure mom's not stowed away in a closet or something. Dad didn't come back and retaliate for getting arrested or something like that. So, you're not going to tell me yes or no, we're just going to peek her head in there real quick and then we'll come back outside. You can lead the way if you're so pleased. You could go in with us. You could go in. Just lead us through. Yeah. Do you have a key? No. Why would you lock the door behind you? I just usually do that. So how do you get in? Uh, how about this other little door that's over here? It's, uh, it's just barricaded up. With what? Uh, garbage and stuff. So how do you get in the house back to lock the door? Because I feel like you're f***ing with me. What the hell? I'm What's the deal? Tired. The lack of eye contact, trouble remembering details, and locking the door behind him? were clear signs that he was hiding something. The officers decided to enter the home and what they found left them in shock. So did you lock the door? I'm gonna probably sleep in the tent or... Are you not supposed to be in the house? Is that why you locked the door? Yes, sir. All okay. right, that's fine. We're not worried about that. We just want to make sure... right now is finding mom. That's it. If you know you're not supposed to be here, that's on whatever we can deal with that at a later point in time. I really don't care about that. Yeah. My main goal is making sure mom's okay, find mom, and do that. So that's what we're here for. We're not here for you because you were sleeping in the bed or whatever. Okay. So, obviously you went in and unlocked it from the inside. Did you get in? Did you just push that one thing open to get in? Are you, do you mind doing that for us right now? Thank you, sir. I think if you shimmy it into the right, we could be able to just pull it out. So push it into the right. Keep pushing it in. Now try to move it out and then push it out. There you go. The cops stepped in to discover the dead body of the woman they were on the check for. The body had started to rot, indicating it had been lying inside for days. Shockingly, her son was living inside with the decaying corpse and even lied to the cops about it. I don't know. I just stayed in my room, stayed in my living room. We're already in, so we're going to find out. So. I understand, friend. You're going to tell me you didn't know mom was in there? Jennifer, I'm going to go to home and make her a shit. 
call 400 and have me come out here. 431 to 400. Have a seat. What is there no contact order between you and mom for? You got a spew. She said I slapped her up on stir. So battery? Yes, sir. Okay, yes, sir. domestic stuff. Yes, sir. When's the last time you've seen dad? This last week, I believe. You know better than me. I wasn't the one that did it, so. Yes, sir. Because I smelt her before you ever even came outside, and you're telling me mom's not in there, and you know damn well that she was in there. Yes, sir. And so you're lying to me. So why wouldn't you just tell us the truth? We told you from the beginning we weren't there for you. We just wanted to make sure mom and mom was good. Yeah. That's all. So what prompted you to lie to us? And you, um, when you went in there and checked on her two days ago, did you know that she was deceased? Okay, but was it apparently obvious to you that somebody smelling like that wouldn't be somebody who? So why didn't you call law enforcement when you found her deceased? You don't know. Okay. Any idea why she's deceased? What could have happened? This guy was taken to the police station and was charged with failing to report death to the medical examiner. His mother's cause of death is still pending. Well, these cops were undoubtedly shocked, but these next officers experienced something even more bizarre. But I don't know what to tell them either. <laughs> tell them a the baby had an emergency and... I can, I can escort you out when you drop the babies off. All right. Have any On February 3rd, 2021, police in Dunwoody, Georgia, responded to an urgent call stating that a newborn had been found unresponsive. Police officers quickly rushed to the scene to provide assistance and evaluate the situation. Hey guys, right here. Breathing? Still CPR? Yep. All right. Face down. Just laying face down in the bed? Yeah. 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 Clear. Analyzing heart rhythm. Clear of patient. Analyzing heart. No shock at all. Right, let's go. Let's go. Sure. Emergency medical. This y'all's job. Damn, I'm gonna care. This is one of my clients. Okay. Have we contacted them yet? No, I haven't called anyone or done anything. Okay. Yet. Go ahead and call. Them. Yeah, go ahead. Let's go ahead and call them. I put him to bed on the back, but his parents say that he could roll over, but I have never seen him. What time did you call them? True. Um, I was quite. Out. So I, 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 I dialed it, and then I think I just kept hitting it, and then I think this, this was them calling you back. The uh, suffer from any medical diagnosis that you know of. Yeah, I'm sure you've already talked to other officers. Can you tell me kind of what happened? Charlie was having a normal day. Okay. I'm still in the process of getting everyone out of bed. <laughs> so no, this guy's still sitting here because um, so this is the bed that Charlie was in. Okay, I'm just gonna take a quick okay. overview of the whole room real quick and then uh, sorry. No, you're uh, fine. His face out of it, I guess is probably the best thing to do. I don't know. Well, he's not gonna be in it. Uh, okay. There you go. So I laid Charlie on his back and I found him in this corner. This corner? Let's see if roll here uh -huh. and into this position here. Was there a mat? Or is that the mat? Like, the That's the mat he was laying on? Yeah. <laughs> So you said you put him down at what time? Um, a little bit after 2 o'clock, I believe. That would be his normal schedule, like 2 or 2.30. 2 and then he would typically... Um... The moment the police arrived at the scene, they started CPR on the baby. The incident occurred at Little Lovey Daycare, owned by Amanda Harris Hickey. She explained that Charlie, the four-month-old baby, was a customer of her home daycare. Hickey later described what happened when she found the baby. 
he would have slept and had a bottle of sleep. Okay, so you came down at 245? 345. I mean, obviously, if I would have known we were having an emergency, I wouldn't have let him sleep, but I thought he was just tired or still sleeping. His bottle was scheduled for 3 o'clock. Okay. So I have his bottle on the counter ready to go, like, waiting for him to wake up. So this is just a... Okay. Can you show me again with the telephone? This is the back. Okay. Can you show me how you lay and how you found it? Okay. Okay. Yeah, I left it open because it needs to be drained and then uh, it's not draining through the hose and the bucket's full. I was going to let you know that. Uh, yes, yeah, ma'am. Just so you have a thing. You're going to have to move. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Right here in the back of the field. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Show me how you placed it. Sure. Can you do a picture and then show okay. me how you found it? child in there so you put him down and picked one up right yep. so he was in there by himself he was yes 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 there was a switch at the same time first responders briefed their fellow officers about the situation stephanie cronmiller the baby's mother also arrived at the scene and hurried over to the ambulance he would have slept and then had a bottle of sleep okay so you came down at 245 345. I mean, obviously, if I would have known we were having an emergency, I wouldn't have let him sleep, but I thought he was just tired or still sleeping. His bottle was scheduled for 3 o'clock. Okay. So I have his bottle on the counter ready to go, like waiting for him to wake up. So this is just a. Okay. Can you just show me again with the telephone? This is the back. Okay. Can you show me how you lay and how you found it? Yeah, I left it open because it needs to be drained and then, uh, it's not draining through the hose and the bucket's full. And I was going to let you know that. Yeah, that's fine. You don't have to move. That's fine. Right here in the back of the and there was another child in there, so he put him down and picked one up, right? Yeah. So he was in there by himself. He was, yes, yes. Yes. There was a switch. A six-year-old, or not, excuse me, six-month-old baby was put down for a nap at this house by, it looks like, any home caretakers came down. Hey, Dylan, what time did they come down and find him? Uh, right before they called. Okay. Put, came down to check on the baby right before they called. Found him face down in the bed, not breathing, not conscious, not alert. Uh, CPR in progress, no shock advised. On the Charlie was taken to the hospital, and the officers started their investigation. They looked over the pack and play where Charlie had been found. Later on, it came to light that Hickey had neglected the baby for two hours. So I noticed you have cameras. I do. They record 24-7? I believe so, yeah. Or is it just motion? That's a great question. I'm not positive. Okay, that's okay. Will we be able to access those? I think so. And get the footage? Like the, fa like the families don't, it's not like something that I share with the family that's a close. No, yeah, no, I understand. Where's the mattress pad? She said that was the mattress pad, but it looks like it is. There's no pad in there. I know, that's what I said. But she said that's what he was sleeping on. They're all like that, though. I didn't want to manipulate it. No. So I haven't okay. touched it yet, but he was found face down in that corner. Top left corner. Uh, she put him back, and he, she said he must roll over. But they do have a camera in here. Right there. It's not going to capture that. I don't know. that. Mm -hmm. The discoloration on the pad. 
And then the discoloration on the. Uh, I'm just saying, I'm saying, I'm just saying. Go ahead and get the, the child out. I'm just going to keep looking through for a minute. That's okay. And uh, I'll be here when you come back. I'm not going anywhere. During their investigation of the daycare, the cops discovered that cameras were installed in the facility. But when they asked if the cameras were working, the owner appeared somewhat skeptical at first, but then handed them the footage. I don't know what to tell them either. <laughs> tell them a baby had an emergency and... I can, I can escort you out when you drop the babies off. And All right. If you have any questions, they, I can answer those questions for you. Okay. All right. Would you need that for you to help it's me out? It's going to be really hard for you to talk. Really mm -hmm. hard. Okay. <laughs> uh, baby I just don't know. I don't. I don't know what. To, I just. Yes, I'll just need. I'll just need an escort. To okay. Just give them. So you hear me give them the same message to everybody. I'm not sure what that message is yet, but I need to tell them all something. We had an emergency. What do I tell them? We had an emergency here yeah, today. Yeah. And. And I'm gonna be closed to like I don't, my clothes. I don't. <laughs> I mean, as of right now, this is just a. Um, I mean, it's all under investigation. We we had to figure out kind of a few more things before we can classify it one way or the other. Okay. <laughs> I don't see any signs of malicious intent here. Just we're not leaning towards that by no means. <laughs> But I can't sit here and tell you this without a doubt. I don't know. I don't, I don't, you can't predict the future. I understand so, that. I just don't know what to tell them. To tell them that, you know, that you had an emergency, a child had to be rushed to the hospital, and leave it at that. <laughs> Technically, you can't share any more I don't know what it is. So, you know, and if they have questions, the mother and the child were rushed to the hospital where the child got six rounds of epinephrine. Despite the efforts, nothing could be done to save the child. Mom, right here? Okay. Yes, just come in. Do we have an update on the hospital yet? Yeah. They've given him, they've given him a bunch of rounds of pepper and heffin. It's looking like it's... Yeah, there's there's no sign of life. They're gone. Yeah. Well, there, I'll let y'all know here in a minute, but I expect you to say I'm going to get the official work. Doctors with the parents, they've done about six rounds of epinephrine. Mm -hmm. oh, sorry. And um, it's not officially called yet, but they're talking with the parents. And uh, it looks like there's some signs of After several medical attempts, Charlie was declared dead at the hospital. The official declaration of his death came after the exhaustive attempts to save him. The examiner will do an examination on Charlie tomorrow to try to determine what happened, what, what the cause of the of death is. That he may know that information tomorrow. That information may take weeks, depending on different tests that they have to run and things like that. So I can't guarantee you that that information will be available tomorrow. But once the case is completed, and that means once the medical examiner completes their examination, they get the findings, they have to write it up. Um, and I also have to turn in my investigative report, and the whole file has to be approved by a supervisor. So there's kind of a chain of events. Um, but once that's complete, you can get a copy of the autopsy report if you would like it. Uh, when Hickey's daughter came, she was frantic and asked anxiously if her mother was in trouble. Her reaction suggested that she might have been aware of her mother's behavior with the kids. However, at that point, the police had no grounds for suspicion and informed the daycare that it had no issues. Hi, right, sir. I'm not gonna hold you here for right now. I am Detective Taffer. I work with the Dunwoody Police, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and let y'all go home. Um, I got some phone numbers for y'all. Let me make sure they're correct, because I will be coming over later. I haven't found anything today that leads towards any type of malicious intent. You know, I can say that as of right now. And I don't foresee that.
A few days later, Hickey was arrested from her home on charges of murder and second degree cruelty to children. Hey, Miss Amanda. Oh. Can you step out here for just a minute, please? Around, face me if it changes when you're back. Okay, you are being placed under arrest. Okay. Okay. Do you want to talk to me? If so, we can go back to the police department and we can talk. If not, you're going to go straight to the cab jail. Yes. You do want to talk to me? Yes. Okay. And so we'll go back and we'll discuss it at the interview room and then from there you'll be released to the jail, okay? Can I tell anyone inside that that's where I'm going? Who's in there? My daughter. Yeah, can you yeah. call her down to the door? Sure. Here what my was her name? Natalie. Natalie. Miss Natalie, can you come here for a moment, please? Your mom's going to go with us, okay? To the headquarters for right now. She wants to talk to her. And from there, she'll be turned over to the county jail. Once she gets to the jail, she'll be able to make phone calls and call and let you know about bonding and things like that. But it's probably going to be a couple of days before she gets a bond, okay? Okay. So she wanted to let you know. Okay. Just so I can tell our attorney, what is she being arrested for? She's arrested for felony murder and cruelty to children in the second degree. According to a statement from DeKalb County District Attorney Sherry Boston, Hickey entered a guilty plea to seven charges of first-degree cruelty to children, seven counts of reckless conduct, one case of second-degree cruelty to children, and three counts of simple battery. A DeKalb County Superior Court judge sentenced Hickey to 35 years in prison, with 30 years to be served in confinement and the remaining five years on probation. Well, that brings us to the end of this video. Today we explored cases that highlighted just how unpredictable the job of a police officer can be. These incidents remind us that officers must always be prepared for the unexpected, as they never know what they might encounter next. The nature of their work demands constant vigilance and adaptability in the face of unforeseen situations. That brings us to the end of today's cases. Please consider showing your support by liking this video and also make sure to subscribe, stay informed about future cases like these. Also, if you enjoyed this video, check out the next video here.